The total solar eclipse is almost here, but unfortunately for some of totality, weather going to play a significant factor in blocking this thing. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. I've been wish casting like crazy. It's not really working here, but we're going to get into the latest high resolution cloud modeling here to show you who is the best opportunity to see the total solar eclipse in all its glory in totality. We're going to have the latest 3D path as well that has that high resolution cloud cover forecast. And then to add insult to injury, here there's also going to be a severe weather threat materializing on the southern end of totality so we are going to break that down if you can't travel or if you do get things blocked by clouds we are going to stream the eclipse live we have several different cameras across the path of totality we have other different feeds coming through so we will be able to show you that again we have that uh, event already made so sign up for the watch party there we are going to go live on this channel one o'clock eastern noon central leading up to the eclipse and then of course bringing the, the eclipse as it rolls across the United States and Canada. Here we go. Path of totality here. Again, across the entire country, we have it. So, but in totality from the Mexico border through Texas, again, into Pennsylvania, into Maine, that is a rough estimate there. But you see right there in Minnesota, where we're going to have a partial eclipse into the Dakotas, eastern Montana, Wyoming, we are going to have clouds around the western side of Washington, northwest Oregon, also cloudy, looking pretty good in the desert southwest and into California, looking also good in parts of coastal Carolinas, some higher clouds streaming through Florida at the time, and then into Michigan, northern Illinois, Iowa, northern Missouri. We're looking really good. On the southern end of those states, though, where totality goes through, that's where we could have some issues. Now, I took the clouds off and I made them a different color table here to kind of show you where we're going to have some issues. The red means we're going to have poor visibility. The yellow means fair. And then the green means we're looking really, really good. And where the best weather continues to look, and we told you this about two weeks ago now, was going to be in Vermont, in New Hampshire, into Maine, and then also the southern half of Missouri into southern Illinois, Arkansas, we're looking okay. We talked about that as well. Where we have the big time issues though still, beet red in parts of southern Texas, big visibility issues from Buffalo into Erie to just east of east of Cleveland. That will likely include Watertown, New York, where the visibility is going to be poor as well. And then Dicey in southeast Oklahoma, you do see some red popping up, hiding behind the black. It's just going to be very, very tough in Texas and Oklahoma, unfortunately, to see this total solar eclipse. Again, we'd have to really thread the needle. I'm not saying it's impossible in north Texas and southern Oklahoma, but we really have to thread the needle here as we uh, move over through totality over over the next over those couple of hours here all right so we're starting things off in texas again and this is that 3d view continuing as we work our way forward and see as we uh work our way to the from north to east let me take this screen full and show you as we move through san antonio into uvalde we are looking cloudy and we are going to see if we can work this uh we can break some clouds free as we work into austin into johnson city into tyler texas still though it looks rough moving into waco again i keep on talking about waco being one of the best places at least right smack dab in the middle of the path of totality but nonetheless clouds look to be there now where you do see the orange on this map this is where we could have some clear skies starting to break through a little bit. The more orange you see, the better the weather is going to be. So at least we get a little bit of hope here. And again, I'm just calling it a little bit of hope. Into Cunningham, Mount Pleasant, Texas, closer to the Red River. Again, this is a high-resolution forecast. Still, though, modeling isn't perfect here. So as you move into the southeast corner of Oklahoma, you see the white really come back. And then we have some issues there. Now, getting into Arkansas, things look a little bit better. See these wispy clouds here, this white and gray. Those are some of those higher thin filtered clouds, those cirrus clouds. Nonetheless, for totality, you don't. we need to get those out of the way. Conway into Little Rock, we're looking okay. Same for us into Hot Springs. Into Jonesboro, we have things looking a little dicey. We had the yellow pop up on that color map meeting that we have okay visibility that we're going to be in and out of some of those clouds same for us in a poplar 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 bluff excuse me paducah uh, kentucky we're looking okay right now as of sunday april 7th uh, our final forecast here into evansville bloomington into indianapolis that white showing back up again on the northern side of totality here so north of indianapolis toward closer to Terre haute uh north of muncie 
that's where it looks better. So the further north, if you're hanging around Indy or Bloomington, uh, Columbus, Indiana, in Indiana, Greensburg, Indiana, Indiana, the north side of the path is going to be your best bet weather-wise. I know that limits the time of totality. But if you want to see totality at all, you'll want to start to think about shifting your plans on the northern side of totality. Closer to Toledo, Ohio, into Finley, the clouds start to come back a little bit. We've been in and out of model guidance here, suggesting that we either have clear skies or cloudy skies. Nonetheless, Lake Erie, it's a game time decision here. Now, where there's more confidence, unfortunately, that there's going to be extra clouds is going to be east of Cleveland. You still see some orange there. We're going to be in and out of those clouds. But where we have the thick stuff back, it's on the eastern side of Lake Erie for Erie, Pennsylvania, into Meadville, into Bloomfield, Warren, PA, Jamestown, New York, Buffalo, New York, Rochester, New York, Syracuse, New York. It's not looking that great. Watertown, same for us. Parts of upstate New York, it's looking a little bit better, but those clouds are trying to stream in where the weather continues to look the best in the path of totality is Vermont, certainly New Hampshire and Maine. If there is one place, if you are waiting until the last minute to go, and I'm sorry for all the locals for suggesting to go here because I know it's a stress on the locals for sure. So be kind out there, everybody. Maine, no doubt the best hardly a cloud in the sky and it's looked like this new hampshire vermont maine was gonna look great for the last week to 10 days that we've been bringing you these forecast update videos new brunswick looks amazing presque isle maine looks amazing um prince edward island looking great as we get into newfoundland we start to bring some clouds back but on the eastern end of newfoundland we are looking good and then the eclipse comes to an end for land anyway in the united states mexico and canada at 519 local time that's going to be again as you get in out of new brunswick so there we go i was talking to a general aviation uh pilot he messaged me and was like, hey, what are the cloud tops looking like here for the Eclipse? Want to try to get up there and see. And that might be the case for a lot of general aviation pilots. So here we go. This is the simulated infrared satellite. When you see these bright colors pop up, the yellows, those are those higher cloud tops as a result of thunderstorm activity. What we're looking at here in the purple, these are those mid to high level clouds this white wispy stuff those are those higher cirrus clouds here so where you see things on the grayer side and when you see things a little on the bluer or purple those are the low level clouds that we have through you see what happens and this is kind of a precursor to what i'm going to talk about next that severe weather threat this is when we have thunderstorms starting to erupt so if you are a pilot at least i think anyway the severe weather threat is going to hold off until we get beyond totality but if anybody's out there traveling there could be some really nasty weather into play notice that most of what we would have here are going to be those lower clouds so again uh the cloud rules come into play as you were flying into the parts of path the totality there uh into indianapolis into southeast missouri and then into uh parts of new york Western New York, especially Buffalo around Lake Erie, uh, around Erie, PA, that's where we're going to have those lower thick clouds. Again, the best place, no doubt, is Maine to see this eclipse and parts of New Hampshire as well. So there we go. I hope that helps all the general aviation pilots as well. There's thunderstorm activity going to be bubbling up late into the period here. All right, here we go. And I know the ceilings, again, are an issue, and the ceilings might be a little bit low in parts of Texas as well. Waco into Dallas, into Snyder, into Sonora, into San Antonio, into southeast Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, Shreveport. We are in a severe weather threat for the eclipse day. Now, I think we start off dry for most of the area, but... I know we're not in totality here, but we're already going to start to see scattered showers and thunderstorms bubble up right along the Gulf Coast. Here's what happens as we move into 2 o'clock Central. Notice we start to see a few things pop. So that would be around totality into the panhandle of Texas and into southwest Oklahoma. Now, getting things into totality, this is 5 o'clock Central. And look at these supercell thunderstorms popping in between Dallas and Houston. So if you are hanging out towards the end of the eclipse, again, and for the most most part we're going to be way done by four or five o'clock here but nonetheless if you're in a traffic jam which had 
happened in 2017 and can happen and likely will happen again if you're out trying to get away from the spot that you went to view the eclipse there could be some really nasty thunderstorms around so just be on the lookout uh for that as we go forward Alrighty, guys i hope these videos have been helpful I know it's not the best news, believe me, I wish I could give clear skies across the path of totality, but no doubt the best opportunity again to see this is going to be in the Northeast, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and then sporadically across the path of totality from again uh, about Little Rock into here. And then we have some issues again it's not the best visibility but it's not the worst visibility. Uh, clouds are looking to be on the lower side here again the where you see the whites and the grays here that are on the screen, like that color match up with the gray that's where the clear skies are. That's the infrared satellite taking the temperature of the cloud cover. And then really, um, when, it, when we're, they're about the same color, it means they're about the same temperature. So those clouds are very, very close to the ground. So again, if you are flying, might be some of those rules uh, into parts of Texas. Again, we're going to be streaming live. We're coming on at 1 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern, noon Central, and then further back, 11 Mountain, and then 10 Pacific. That's the time that we are going to start streaming. Of course, the eclipse gets going at about a half hour from that start time, the partial portion anyway. But we are going to be looking at the weather in real time. So again, if you did move your location or if you're looking for that real-time weather data, we are going to have that there in a forecast and real-time sense. And then we're also going to have, of course, complete coverage of the eclipse in real time from different locations across the country. So if cloud cover does mess up your view, we have you covered here. Also want to point out, I had a couple of questions on this. Yes, the skies will still turn much darker if you are locked in the clouds. We're still losing the sun. You're just not going to be able to see the other stuff. The secondary stuff, though, will still happen. The sky is getting darker. The birds and crickets and animals and things like that acting weird because still something is happening. We just might not be able to see it across parts of the path of totality. Good luck, guys. Safe travels. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. If you found this content helpful and love hanging out with us and talking about the weather, even post-eclipse, you've come to the right place, especially as we roll into hurricane season. Good luck, guys. Be safe. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you soon.